Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll make a start then. Um, so what I'm going to talk about is a little profiling tool I'm developing. Uh, and the idea is that by using the profiling tool, I can um, try and understand my own creativity um, in, a, in, a, in a more comprehensive way. Um, and uh, hopefully it will have, um, it, it can be used uh, more widely in education. That's the basic idea behind this. So the story starts back in early March before lockdown. I was on holiday with my wife. We went to Northwest Scotland. We visited Arran and Skye and the coastline between those two islands. And the weather was kind to us. It was a really nice holiday. Lots of time to relax and take in the wonderful scenery. And as we were driving around Arran, I think it was the second day, um, sun was shining, we came across this beach and I just wanted to get out of the car and get on the beach and do something. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. When I got down there, I eventually stacked some stones up and took some photographs and it gave me a lot of joy. It was, it was a really sort of uplifting experience. And as you can see from that first picture, it was a really stunning location. And after this, I thought, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm on holiday. I've got plenty of time. Uh, I will um, try and make a few more of these towers. Um, so over the next six days, I made a, a tower each day in different locations. I picked a location and I got a bit of geology in my background. I was a geologist originally, so I gave them some geological meaning. And during the holiday, I decided to put my photographs and videos together and make a little movie, only a few minutes long, which I posted on YouTube for my family. So that's the first part of the story. Roll on to the next context, the April um, Creative HE Facebook forum discussion on creative self-expression. I wanted to use this as an illustration of how I had tried to create something which <clears throat> expressed how I felt about a particular situation. So I created a narrative, uh, that's three on the slide. And from this narrative then, I had, if you like, some, some knowledge of my experience. Um, I then began to sort of evaluate it, to reflect on it and to try and draw out what was creative about it. So that was the start of the idea of a mapping tool, a mapping and profiling tool. And then shifting to the next context, which was the um, latest edition of Creative Academic Magazine that Emma mentioned, um, that magazine was all about creative self-expression. So I used this story and the tools there in the magazine. And now we come to this um, current context, which is this session. And I think what I'm trying to do here is almost reframe what I'm doing and, 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 and suggest that this tool could be used as an aid to reflection. Could I have the next slide, please, Emma? Okay, so I think reflection is a very subjective process because it, in that reflective process, we're really grappling with a world that has meaning to us, trying to create new meaning and using our beliefs, our opinions, our knowledge, our understandings, our feelings and emotions, and all that comes into play. And I, 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 I sort of realized that because it is so subjective um, and really has only meaning to us, then by creating a profiling tool, maybe we are explaining what our subjectivity is, not only to ourselves, but to other people if they if they want to see. So, so that I think underlies my thinking about this profiling tool. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's evolving uh, and it began, I think, with only about four headers and now it's, it's, it's seven and maybe it will include a few more before too long. But the basic structure is something about the context and circumstances and affordances and mediums, the sort of approaches and motivations to learning, doing, creating, um, an attempt to evaluate the creativity, and that is judged against my own norms and experiences. Um, fourthly, some sort of subjective evaluation of the context. I'm using Kaufman and Baghetto's little c, pro c model there. Fifthly, um, a subjective evaluation of the purposes of my creativity. Now here I'm using Carly Lassig's model, uh, which is creative self-expression, um, mm -hmm. Um, uh, creativity for to achieve a task or a purpose and creativity involved in trying to push the boundaries. And then six, the value and experience and outcomes to me and seven, the audiences for my creativity. So that's, if you like, the framework I'm using. Could I have the next slide, please, Emma? 
Okay, so I've broken the, the tool into two parts for this presentation, and um, I'm only going to talk about this first part of my experience uh, around this tool, which was this wonderful experience of building towers on, 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 uh, in Northwest Scotland. So the first part then, the context and circumstances, here I was on holiday, lots of time, um, that was you know, an unusual context in unusual places, inspired by the scenery and the light. Um, and, um, and um, you know, wanting to do something in these particular contexts, these, um, these um, scenery contexts. The affordances are all round in the landscape and the materials, in the tools, in the mobile phone that I had my camera um, on, um, and in the software that I, that I use. The second header, estimated mix of context approaches, motivations. It's really very crude, but it's really to give me a picture, if you like, rather than precise measurements of these things. So between collaborative individual, formal and formal, um, directed, self-directed, for example. So for me, this was a very personal individual experience. It was informal and self-directed. It was emergent. It just came about because I happened to be in that place and got inspired by being there. The motivation was intrinsic um, and it was it, 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 interest and curiosity driven. Um, I think I wanted to achieve, once I'd built one tower, I wanted to build more. So there was a sort of process of wanting to make things in this uh, on this holiday. Uh, I was definitely playing in this process. Um, it was very emotional in the sense that it gave me a lot of pleasure on the experience. The imagination, yeah, it was my idea. I have seen, obviously, towers before on beaches but it was my my idea in this context and something I've done before I haven't made the towers but what I have done is made movies so those th those two came together there thirdly then the evaluation of creativity judge case my own northern experiences I think the idea of making towers and locating and making them photographing and videoing them and then making the movie really it was re it was at the little end of, of, of creativity and if we go down a little bit further we go into that little C, the little C of, of Kaufman and Baghetto's model, the everyday sort of creativity. So I'm not, I'm not sort of shouting out that this was an, uh, an unbelievable act of creativity. It was a little thing that meant something to me. Emma, could I have the next one, please? And then um, the subjective evaluation of the purpose of my creativity. I drawing on Carly Lassig's model. If you're not familiar with Carly Lassig's work, it's really, I think it's really important work for, for education. She looked at adolescence creativity and identified these three different, um, if you like, um, contexts within which creativity was um, undertaken. So for this particular um, journey for me, it was around creative personal expression. I felt something in that particular place. I wanted to make something. And so it was fundamentally around that, that sort of area. The value of the experience and outcomes to me, um, well, I think there was value in the artifacts. It was small. Um, the aesthetic value, I think, was quite great. As I said, I felt real pleasure in doing this. The affordance, though, of what I'd done, having made these towers and made the movie, was that it created opportunities to learn from that experience. And the transformational change occurred when I started digging into that and I began to understand that um, there, there was merit in developing these sorts of, of tools. And the audience for my creativity, it was essentially me and only me on that beach. Um, it's what I wanted to do and having done it, it gave me real pleasure. And then I shared what I'd done with my family via the little movie. So the, the audience then was, was my family circle. Could have the um, next to last slide, please, Emma. And I haven't got time to, um, to go into detail, but the second element of this process was much more of a problem solving um, and boundary pushing element where I created the narrative and tried to make deeper sense of what of my experience through these new tools. And broadly, you can see the difference in the patterns between the two, the two parts of, of, of my experience. Um, and um, suddenly I've run out of time. Could you go to the last slide, please, Emma? So 
uh, as I said earlier, I think reflection is a subjective process. By creating a profiling term, it's a, it's a synthesis. It's, it's um, if you like, a, a, a learning process in its own right. And then using the tool, you can interrogate your own experience and challenge your own assumptions that are in, in, that, in, in that tool. So it, it's, I think it has wider application as a tool to aid reflection. Uh, and I will end there. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Norman. Any questions for Norman? Feel free to unmic or, or write them in the um, chat. We've got time for a couple of questions and then we'll move on to the next example. Hello, everybody. Can I ask a question? It's Chrissy here. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Norman. As always, very interesting and fascinating and uh, helping us think into new direction. I'm just wondering because there's a lot of discussion around the usefulness or not of measuring creativity. I mean, I can see the usefulness of this tool for evaluating our own creativity and as a reflective tool, like you say, but why do we need to measure it? I don't think it's about yeah. it's, it's not measuring it. I don't think I'm, I'm not calling this a measuring instrument. I'm I'm it's really learning. It's a way of digging into our own experiences. We can create a profiling tool about anything. But create, in this case, it's obviously creativity. It's about a way, I think, of synthesizing the way I see creativity and then, if you like, uh, testing my assumptions on experiences. So here, here are a set of experiences that are all linked together over three months and I can look at different aspects of them and see whether my assumptions about creativity hold up, whether they, they are useful or not. So I wouldn't say it's about measuring. It's it's more about trying to understand um, is the way I would put it. OK, thank you for explaining. I have a follow up question and I'm going to stop <laughs> because I always find your work fascinating. But OK, so it's it's looking back basically about uh, on the experience and, and how our creativity is influencing what we are doing. What about the future? Do you also look into the future? Um, well, <sighs> I mean, I know you know, Chrissy, but I, I sort of have um, an ecological view of creativity where stuff emerges as a result of your presence, your involvement and engagement in the environment. So, uh, yes, it goes on. But would I have been able to predict on that beach in Arran what has unfolded since then? Absolutely not. So, you know, the future is completely... Is, is pretty open, I think, completely on, pretty open. And we just have to um, attend to what's happening and pay attention to that and respond and react to what's happening when it happens. So this lovely idea of watchful anticipation, if you do stuff, if you put yourself out there in an environment, then for sure things are gonna happen. And really the job for us to do, the job for our consciousness is to be aware of when things are happening and to, you know, respond accordingly and hopefully creatively where it's demanded. Thank you, Dobbin.